consulting across government. And on contractors in terms yeah. and agency, it's about it's over 40 percent. Stephen, well. do you want to? Yeah, well, I just really want to come to the sense of oversight you have as a whole. I mean, the key finding for me is <coughs> PAG 16, which says the government is not achieving value for money from its use of consultants and interims. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the key finding of but the NAO report. Do you, do you not accept that? No. Me? Well, I mean, the, the point, that, that's based on some numbers about spend. Uh, you, the value for money, right, is about inputs and outputs. So you've got to value, what's the value of the outputs? Let me... Let me explain. Well, look, most of, a lot of departments aren't actually measuring the outputs. Yeah, That's let, one let, of me the explain, let me read this out to you. Obtaining an accurate estimate of the benefits and using consultants is difficult because of the sheer range of work the consultants do, and therefore the ability to have useful measures for all types of projects. Furthermore, it's hard to attribute cause and effect, even where performance has improved, as in many instances, consultants' work is within the context of wider departmental projects or programmes. Okay. That's the NAO report from 2006. Sure. It is. Look, if you could tell me how to value the outputs, that would be fantastic. I absolutely have no idea how you measure accurately the extra input. I mean, if you allow me to do two projects, one with consultants, one without, and I could compare them, doing the same thing at the same time, we don't ever do that. So. You know, I'm, talking it, about I'm afraid no one will be able to answer that question accurately when they come back here next year, five years, ten years. You will not get an accurate answer to that question. So, it, but it, it must be wrong to estimate the value for money on the basis of the input only. I mean, what's happening during those three years is a big increase in the number of projects. Like I say, so the consultancy spend as a share of what government was actually doing because of the extra number of projects that were going on has declined. So that's maybe an indicator of higher productivity. When you come to look at the, the next year, if you use the, the analysis that's in the, this report, you'll find a massive jump in productivity because all you're measuring is the inputs. The inputs have gone down massively, so you'll say, therefore, there's been this enormous increase in productivity. It, that would be as wrong as estimating that on the basis of the inputs haven't changed, that somehow nothing's changed. What but I'm saying is there is a fundamental problem here, yeah. and you're not going to be able to get around it. And I, and I would add, in the period of the last government, the, the percentage of spend on consultancy right. relative... Uh, do you want to go and do your vote? You're right. going to hate us. No, no, don't hate you. You're going to hate us. Sorry. Hate uh, you, uh, we're going to go and vote, and then we'll come back. We'll come back. How long do we have? Quarter mm. then. If you can all come back faster, we can get on with it. Yeah. Um, uh, right, Stephen, uh, please continue. Sorry, Back to your, okay, your previous answer, um, I may be misunderstanding, but when I was saying this report says you haven't got value for money, you seem to be saying that's wrong because we can't measure the output of the performance of consultants. Was that what you were saying? I was saying I, I think it's, it's always going to be very hard to... to uh, say very firm statements on value for money because we can measure the inputs very accurately but we can't measure the outputs so it's quite hard what we know has been going on here is the consultancy spends much the same i'm not kind of saying it's gone down much much the same until uh this year uh, and during that period we seem to be doing quite a lot more if we had any way of accurately estimating that we might be able to suggest that value for money have been improved, but I'm, I'm not even going that far. I'm saying that that well, seems to me my a priori view, but I can't partial out the impact of consultants on particular projects. If you can, I'd be delighted. Well, I mean, I expect most commercial organisations paying for consultants do expect to measure the output of what they've delivered. Um, but you, you say about measuring the impact, one of the pounds. findings... What? Billion pounds? One point five billion. Money. Would, would, you like, well, would you like to have someone that worked for one of those <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, consultants to tell you precisely what they did do? I mean, the since he worked for Accenture. The I, mean, programs, I wasn't uh, talking about the consultants themselves, I was talking about yeah. people paying no, for no, the no, consultants. The, in, so. in, any, in any business, people who uh, recruit in a consultancy team interspersed with their own team uh, recognise that the, the outputs of that is what they measure. Then what you distinguish between is that done by the in-house team or the team that you brought in, 
and, you know, is a very fine judgment. What people do is they try and do it with in-house teams if they can, and if they can't, they bring in the externals. And, and the, some of these programs are incredibly complicated and difficult, and actually in most of the areas uh, that I think we know of in recent years, they've actually gone very well. Well, I'll give you a specific, uh, from my own mm. professional experience, you, you set up the FSA, the Financial Services Authority, they had a big yep. exercise some years ago based on a Professor Sparrow, a retired policeman that became a Harvard professor. And the whole exercise was on performance measurement, and it was measuring these sort of things. But could I come back to your other points? And did they partial out the consultants versus the rest? It was looking at both the performance measurements for staff and for consultants, yes. So, but you also say, well, we, it's difficult in terms of the inputs. But we've got departments here that are hiring consultants without even checking whether they've got available staff with the skills. No, I think that the problem is, like I say, you've, got, no, you've, got, spe you've got specialisms that are difficult. As you say, we do have shortages in IT, uh, but you're, as the chairman's rightly pointed out, the, the bigger gap is on program project management, where these are very marketable skills. And uh, these are very, I, I know this, very valuable people in departments. If you go to HR and say, like, I, I need some more PPM people, they'll, it'll be hard to get them out of their existing places because they're probably as a part of a shortage skill very heavily used where they are so um, okay could I, could I take know, it we, we do need more of these people we do need to train more we do need to grow more completely accept that we're, we're talking on measurement because one of the things you yourselves mm. were doing to measure was you introduced key performance indicators yeah but fewer than half of your departments were reporting on your own performance indicators well, again, it's, it's even if we have perfect performance indicators, it comes back to that question about how do you pay consultants? Now, you'd love to pay consultants related to their, their performance, their outputs. Uh, the private sector, the vast majority of their payments are related to the input. But I, I was, I'm just trying to understand. You, you put in place performance indicators. Your own departments are ignoring you. Well, why, why was that? When you say we, who, who do you mean by we in this case? Uh, well, I mean, you head up the civil service, but the OGC... I, uh, I, well, I wish I had that power to do that well, for all I think we may yeah. want to come on to that, because I think that's one of the problems, actually, is the fact that the, the permanent secretaries are probably their own fiefdoms. But uh, the OGC, uh, page 20, power 2.3, yeah. says that it didn't feel it had sufficient authority. So if they didn't have sufficient authority, and the key performance indicators, they were putting in place to deal with the 2006 NEO report were being ignored, who do they go to? Who in the civil well, service do they report to? Th this is a question of, um, it's, it, it is about the balance of centralization versus uh, independence for departments. I think it's, it's a, it's a, you're absolutely right, this is at the key, and I think the experience we're going through now where we have gone the other way, as it were, we have centralized and we've mandated is proving to be a really interesting experiment and that so far it's meaning that partly because of the work we did before uh, following up the 2006 report we are now in a situation where it became easy to with a change in political will to say actually we want to mandate all of these things mm. from the centre mm. that we've been able to do that so when, when you said earlier because you said it, one phrase you used earlier which was interesting you said you felt we should have done for, for some for some time you were referring to gathering data on arms length bodies failed to I think the phrase was, uh, you felt we should have done this for some time. You're referring to gathering data on arms length bodies. Uh, now, would you say... It wasn't, it wasn't so much gathering data, sorry. It was this whole question, and I've said it before at select committees, of... It was basically, I think, a function of history as to whether something was... Uh, you know, how independent a particular body was. And they'd been set up over decades. And some of these were... Were, were staffed by civil servants, some by non-civil mm. servants. And, and you couldn't actually go through a principle and say, why is one department in this area and another? Which is why, uh, post-election, they've done this analysis of saying, you know, should this exist? Should it be in-house? And actually, quite a number of them have been brought in. But if so you'll, you'll see if you're civil service numbers budget, go up Yeah, because but if you're giving someone a budget, don't you need to understand how that money's <clears> been spent? And part of that is understanding how it's been spent on consultants and interims. You weren't gathering the data on interims until 2009. There's a concern that you're probably not gathering the data on professional services where some of this may be, be squeezed to. Could I just ask... Well, no, no, no. Can I, can I just be clear about that? For arm's length bodies, I mean, there is this a very legitimate question of independence. I mean, if you want to set up... Let's say we go to the BBC and say, no, tell us what you're spending on consultants. They'd say, actually, no. 
Uh, there's an interesting question there about precisely how much we can lay down for. Sure, but if you're giving, if you're giving an arm's length body their whole budget, I don't think it necessarily, you know, exactly is at odds to understand how that money's been spent. So the question is, where do you put the line between where do you put the line between mandating what that arm's length body should do, and and to where where do you give them a degree of independence? And that's absolutely that's a perfectly valid discussion to have. And I think you need to have understood whether you want to completely control it or keep it. Very right so, arms length. Stephen, I'm going to come back to you. Let me go. Ian is waiting ages. I promise I'll come back to you. Um, uh, build on this, really. Uh, page six, there's a specific statement. Departments do not.